with us now our good friend Kurt Lawson over at the West Bloomfield Police Department. Always great having you with us. It's always nice to see you, and I'm glad to see you're back in the studio. <laughs> I will say, though, uh, I was kind of used to wearing my pajama bottoms. Uh, I know you like those slippers. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, um, for any guy out there that is looking for a gift for, uh, you know, your significant other, Ugg slippers. They are the best things. My sister got, a, uh, got us all of them a few years ago for Christmas. They are by far the best slippers worth the money, uh, and they last for years. So there you go. My tip of the day for uh, all, you, all you guys out there. And the deputy chief loves those kind of slippers and be great in my office. So I'll have to <laughs> There you go. Hey, Kurt, uh, I was on your um, Facebook page. You guys are doing a new video series. Tell us about that. Well, we're just always looking for ways and how we can reach the community and get and push information out. Obviously, uh, we use the Megacast quite often and you guys are a great platform, uh, but we're just looking for other avenues to, to get information out. Uh, we've had some issues with fraud over the last year and a half and really seen a significant uptick lately. So we really want to push that, that messaging out. But it's great to hear directly um, from you and members of your team. So when it comes to fraud, any specific types of cases that you're seeing or is it all over the board? Well, really, it, it runs the gamut, right? So we have uh, 475 different fraud cases against our residents last year alone and this year we're already up over 80. so this is a phenomenon that's not going to stop it just continues to increase and uh, you know criminals are very creative so they have all these different ways and how they're trying to take money from uh from individuals but we just want to warn our residents that no legitimate company no legitimate law enforcement agency is going to call you and on the phone and ask you for your personal information or ask you to go buy gift cards or send them Bitcoin or give them your credit card number. I, they are good though. Some of these emails yeah. that come across, uh, you can fall victim to them. I mean, myself, I'm like, hey, wait a minute. In fact, um, Deputy Chief, my husband, he was the victim of one of these scams uh, a few weeks ago. And I made him do a story with Fox too. He was so embarrassed. And I said, no, you know, it's you important. need to do it and share your story because there are going to be yeah. other people and maybe you can help with this. But it was through like a Microsoft um, email that came through and then he called them. No, two weeks later, I get the same email and I almost fell for it. Now, I would never actually go out and buy gift cards for anyone, um, you know. And if I was home, he wouldn't have either. Uh, but but they they look so real. So how can people tell a difference? Well, like I said, if someone's calling you at your home and asking for personal information, that's your first clue. But you're exactly right. These individuals, they do this all day long and they've gotten very good at it. They have a number of different scams and they're very persistent and they get very pushy and they're, they're moving you very quickly. And a lot of times they're using fear tactics. And one of the things that really concerns us right now, and I just got done doing an interview with uh, WDIB, was that individuals are calling victims and saying that they're from the federal government, whether it's the FBI, the DEA, the IRS. And they're saying, you know, we have a warrant for your arrest or your son, your granddaughter has been arrested and you need to post bond for them. Another one we've seen quite often is a vehicle has been stopped in a different state. It's filled with drugs. Uh, you have a warrant for your arrest. You have to post bond. Now, if you're someone that is uh, not familiar with this, the fact that this is going on, this is going to create anxiety. And we see time and time again, especially with our elderly, uh, individuals going to uh, the CVS or Walgreens, buying gift cards and sending them to these individuals because you know they, they obviously care about their granddaughter or their grandson and uh, they don't understand that they're being scammed. How are they getting the information of like the name of their grandkids? Now, that's a great, great uh, question. And I think there's a number of ways they do this. A lot of it is data mining. You know, with the internet these days, you can find out anything. A lot of times my officers tell me they don't want to be on social media here at the police department because they don't want anyone to see their face. I said, well, why don't you go Google yourself? You're all over the place, right? So there's information on the internet that people can, can mine. Uh, and, and you can pay, you know, a certain amount of money in certain platforms to come up with all that information. Yeah, it is pretty easy. Um, for uh, anyone out there, you can set up a Google alert 
for yourself so you can put it uh, I have one for my name so if my name comes up then I get an alert uh, to you know see where it popped up does it's not a hundred percent but still it's a good thing for people to uh, know what's going on out there um, with that Kurt Lawson with us here on the mega cast he's the deputy chief for the West Bloomfield Police Department I know that around the holidays porch pirates are always a big deal is that still an issue it seems like um, Amazon trucks are still circling the neighborhood just as busy as holiday season or not. Well, they arrive at my house house quite often. Uh, I think with what you've seen, I think we've seen a reduction in the fact that we've had larcenies from these type of packs just because so many people have cameras now on their house, right? So the, the ring video, uh, the different camera systems that you could buy is something like Costco. So I think that's been somewhat of a deterrent. So we haven't seen uh, a huge uptick in that here in West Bloomfield. I, I don't know if you've seen the video that's been going around, uh, Kurt, around social media. And uh, someone in Detroit, uh, they came to take the package off of the guy's porch. And he came out with, let's say, a very large gun. <laughs> and that person returned that package quickly. <laughs> you know, it was... Uh, I, some people don't mess around with them, right? Okay. Uh, because that is one thing when you have the ring cameras, uh, it, it will alert you to let you know that uh, someone is on your porch. And you know what's so great about our community is everyone kind of watches out for each other and we have a great partnership with our community. So many times there'll be a neighbor that just looks at their, their neighbor to the left and they, you know, that, that vehicle doesn't look like it belongs there. I've never seen that vehicle there. And people have no issue with giving us a call and we actually encourage that uh, we'll come out right away and, and check somebody out. Um, one of the other things I know that we try to do in our neighborhood as well is, uh, you know, if your neighbor has a package and you know they're not going to be home all day, is always um, we'll either take it and put it into our house and say, hey, we have your package over here, or try to at least hide it so it's not so visible as well. Great idea. Uh, do you guys have like a um, like a some type of system there at the police department for people to you know get packages or you know or if they're going to be buying and selling things online to meet with people up there at the police department so many times we see especially on like facebook marketplace um we have a spot right in front of our station that people often meet i would say on a weekly basis uh it's a well-lit um it's quite a few people around public area where you can come uh, meet the other person that you're going to do a transaction with. It's a safe environment, and we actually encourage that. Uh, we have done investigations in the past where uh, an in individual will meet uh, someone else in a mall parking lot or um, on a side street somewhere, and then, you know, there's a theft that takes place or they get robbed. So we encourage uh, residents, if they're going to engage in these transactions, feel free to come to the police department, our front parking lot. We have cameras everywhere. It's a safe environment for you. And it's also a good way to know that you're not going to get scammed. But also, uh, a lot of people have the porch pickup where they'll throw it out on their porch. But uh, for us, I don't like anyone to know my address. It's like you said, it's not hard to actually find it if you want to. But still, having them come to your house, right. I think is a little bit different because they're strangers. Of course. Totally agree. So what, well, else, is, what else is up over there at the uh, good old police department, Kurt? Well, I just want to circle back for a quick second on the fraud because we had an incident the other day that was, was quite concerning. So we had a, a young lady, 25-year-old, that lives in West Bloomfield, and she got one of these calls from a quote-unquote federal agent that told her that a vehicle was stopped in Texas, like I said earlier, that uh, it was filled with drugs and that she had an arrest warrant for, for herself. Now, she's got a small baby. Uh, she's now panicking, like, what is going on? Uh, he's very convincing gives her his ID number, uh, where he works. The number that he called on was actually spoofed to a Department of Justice real phone number. Wow. So, you know, he's telling her, you have got to send these gift cards to us to help pay a bond on your warrant. And uh, you know what, she, she was hesitant. She thought this was a scam. Two hours later, two gentlemen show up at her door. One that identified himself as a police officer and one that identified, identified himself as an FBI agent. And it was at that point where uh, she did, in fact, um, give them the money, uh, you know, over the phone, uh, some gift cards. So that concerns us because that's definitely an escalation of what we've seen before. We see these phone scams day in and day out. Uh, the, you know, someone falls victim on a daily basis. It could be $1,500. We've had people $15,000. 
But when people are actually, suspects are actually, actually showing up at your doorstep, that's a concern and that's what we want our residents to know about. And if anyone like that shows up, you need to call 911 immediately. Wow, I've never heard of them actually coming to your door. Um, did they have any type of identification? And what happens if you can catch some of these people? What charges do they face? So the one individual that said he was an FBI agent did not show any ID or anything like that. So we would encourage uh, you know, people to ask for identification. If there's any doubt, close the door, call your local police department. The second subject had some sort of uniform on. He's the one that said he was a West Bloomfield police officer. And they actually had a blue car out front that was unmarked. Uh, so she actually thought that this was a legitimate um, you know, law enforcement official. Uh, and that's where they're really, they're really pushing that envelope. They're really using those scare tactics and intimidation. And it's very concerning. Yeah, because if they're um, caught, wouldn't that be impersonating a law enforcement officer? Well, there's gonna be a number of charges for these individuals and a lot of them are gonna be felonies. But uh, you know, these cases are very difficult. We're one of the few departments that have the capability to investigate fraud. Uh, it takes a lot of manpower, women power. It's expensive. Uh, you have to use a lot of technology. But many times after even two months of investigation, we'll find a lot of these cases end up being from Nigeria or South America or the UK. And obviously there's not much we can do about that. But these two individuals that showed up at the front door of one of our residents, uh, they're local and we're doing our best to locate them. That is really scary. And it is hard because uh, it's like you said, with so many of these fraud cases, they're not even in the United States. So there's so little that can be done and uh, pretty much guarantee that you're not getting the money back. Many times, you know, the victims don't get the money back. We have a, a detective that's on a task force with Secret Service is based out of Novi. Uh, so we have a really close relationship. Uh, they handle a lot of frauds and we're able to, uh, you know, at times go out of state, go international uh, through that platform, but it is very difficult. And there's so many small law enforcement agencies throughout the state of Michigan, and, and they just can't investigate these type of crimes. Kurt Lawson here with us on the Mega Cast. He's a deputy chief over at the West Bloomfield Police Department. Um, how's hiring going right now over at the police department? Uh, like all police departments, uh, probably throughout the country, and especially in Michigan, it's been a heavy lift. Uh, we have right now, the last I checked, uh, 10 people that will be interviewing for a police officer. Uh, we probably had maybe 20 or 30 that applied. Now you compare that to 1994 when I started, there was 250 people that applied. So we are continuing to have a difficult time uh, attracting the top tier talent, uh, but we are not going to hire here until we find that top 1%. Uh, the one positive thing I have seen, however, has been an increase in the number of women that have applied, uh, which is uh, exciting for us because you know we want to represent our community, and uh, we've had some great candidates. So, give us a breakdown of the process. How long does it take? Well, it's a process that takes uh, several months. So, you, you have to do the advertisement for for a period of time, uh, whether it's 30 days or 60 days. Then you have to do the testing process make sure they're what we call MCOLs certified. They've, they've taken the MCOLs test, they've taken a physical fitness test. And then we have to go through the oral interview process, which we do right here in-house. And then we obviously obviously have to do a comprehensive background check. And that could take you know two weeks to a month. Kurt Lawson with us here on the Megacast. It's always great talking to you. If people want to find out more about uh, the possibility of joining your team, how can they do that? Well, they have to get a hold of our HR department right here at the West Bloomfield Town Hall, uh, or they can call the West Bloomfield Police Department. We'll guide them to the right people. And if they need any inf more information about fraud, uh, check out our social media platforms. We're gonna have more information on there. And if you're a victim, uh, you know, please reach out to law enforcement, report it. My greatest concern is that even though we see these cases every day, I think this is happening even more often than we know because people are embarrassed. They don't wanna tell their family members uh, but we really need to know and we want to investigate it the best we can for our for our residents. Is it important for people to uh, file a police report? It is. Uh, you're going to need that later on to try to reimburse money, especially if you're uh, giving them their visa number or they've gotten into your bank accounts. So feel free. We'll take the report anytime. We'll come to you if we have to. 
um, we're here for, the, for our residents. You're listening to 89.3 WBL, Deal Orchard Lake, 88.1 WBFH, Bloomfield Hills. Uh, Deputy Chief, anything maybe we didn't touch on that you want to share before we say goodbye to you today? Well, I know that like you, uh, we're pretty happy that the restaurants are opening back up a little bit more. We're at 50%. Uh, we've had great compliance throughout this whole COVID uh, situation over the past, you know, over a year now. So I'm glad to see that the COVID numbers are still on their way down. Uh, people continue to wear their masks to keep that social distance. And uh, we've seen more vaccine sites open uh, throughout the state and specifically Oakland County. So I think that's all, those are all positives. So I think we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Let's hope so. Fingers crossed. It's hard to believe it's been a year. I know. It's been a long year. Yeah, remember, it's been a long two weeks. <laughs> yeah, 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 it has. Well, we want to say thank you again. We always appreciate your time. It's great to see both of you. Have a great day.